I'm talking about a situation where we were told to stop something for a political reason, that would be a very big deal. It's not happened in my experience. Well, that was Jim Comey a month ago telling the Senate Judiciary Committee the president never tried to improperly influence him in this investigation on Russia. Now he's coming back to the Senate and he may be telling a different story. We'll find out tomorrow. The hearing isn't just going to be on cable news. ABC, CBS, NBC, the broadcast networks are planning to air it live as well. You may be watching tomorrow. What should you be looking for while and after Jim Comey speaks? Joining us to answer that question, Andrew McCarthy is a former federal prosecutor, and he joins us tonight. So a lot of people are interested in this story, but it's a complex, sprawling story with more innuendo than fact. What should, how should we be scoring this at home? What should we look for? Well, I think the main thing, Tucker, that has really uh, confused people about the discussion over the last weeks is the idea that pressure and obstruction of justice are the same thing and they're clearly yes. not. Uh, actually, if you look at what uh, former Director Comey's testimony says, the case that there was obstruction of justice is much worse today than it was yesterday, and I actually didn't think there was any case yesterday. But I think what people need to understand is putting pressure on a subordinate is not obstruction of justice. The, the key element of obstruction of justice is corruption. So if you don't have pressure that is motivated by corruption, there is no obstruction. And the president has as much authority or more to exercise prosecutorial discretion as any of the subordinates he has who are U.S. attorneys or uh, FBI agents hmm. across the country. So I, I think to the extent that these two concepts have been conflated, it's important to separate them. Pressure is not obstruction. So by discretion, you mean he doesn't have to sit passively by while people who work for him run these investigations, he can attempt to influence them? Well, he certainly can, but what I, what I mean by discretion is in, in United States attorney's offices all across the country every day, prosecutors dismiss cases even though they could be prosecuted for a variety of reasons. They weigh the equities and they decide whether a case ought to be brought or not. If you look yeah. at what Trump is alleged to have done here, he went through the calculus that's very much like what a prosecutor does in a normal case. He said, okay, here's, here's what they're accusing this guy of, evidently false statements, but on the positive side of the ledger, you know, he didn't do anything inappropriate with Russia. He's already been laid low. Right. I had to fire him yesterday. He's already been humiliated. Enough is enough. Now, you may not agree with that, but it's not right. corrupt. And it's the kind of calculus that happens all the time in an exercise of prosecutorial discretion. Interesting. Uh, so what else should we look for? Well, I, I think there's going to be a big to-do about this whole business about whether Trump sought a loyalty pledge for, from Comey or not. And yeah. th that, I think, is a lot more complicated than uh, you would get from what we're hearing people comment about all of this. To a, to a certain degree, the FBI director is a subordinate, to a complete degree he is a uh, subordinate of the president, and does owe the kind of loyalty that an inferior officer owes a, a superior officer. He, he has to obey orders, and he's got to carry out policy and the like. I think Comey's quite right that what he really owes the president is honesty. And in, in actually being honest, th that's how you're, you're best uh, loyal to the president. Um, so the question is going to be, what did Trump mean by loyalty? And I think to the extent that people say that loyalty is not a factor in these superior subordinate relationships, that's, that's not the case. I, I mean, I, I hate to editorialize, but I, I don't know a single person speaking on behalf of the White House who can explain things as clearly as you can. Well. You, you probably don't want to work there, but you, it would help <laughs> <laughs> them anyway. Andrew McCarthy, thank you for coming on. That was really interesting. Thank you, sir.